Hello everyone, welcome to Science Note. In the previous video, we talked about how proteins fold and about chaperones, the molecules that help in protein folding. At the end of the video, I told you that I will begin with a playlist of video about the structure of proteins. In this series, we will talk about the primary, secondary, the tertiary and the quaternary structure of proteins. This is the first video of that series that will be uploaded here. So this video is about the introduction of proteins, the types of proteins and the primary structure of proteins. So let us begin. What basically proteins are? Proteins are unbranched, they are not branched, they are unbranched polymer of 22 standard amino acid. They are unbranched. Polymer of 22 standard amino acids. Proteins, they are basically the amino acids joined together via the help of bonds. These bonds are peptide bonds. So they are, are we clear? I hope you are clear with this. Now, proteins are divided into various classes. The first we will talk about the simple and conjugated proteins. Simple and conjugated proteins. The simple proteins are they're just a stretch of amino acids. Simply amino acids, they're joined together to form a simple protein. So, amino acids are joined in this fashion. And now what are conjugated proteins? Conjugated proteins, along with the amino acid, there is a prosthetic group a cofactor present. So, they are called conjugated amino acids. They are complex, obviously, along with the amino acid chain, there is some cofactor, some prosthetic group. For example, glycoproteins. Along with the amino acid chain, there is carbohydrate. Metalloproteins. Along with the amino acid polymer, there is a metal ion present. So, these are the conjugated proteins. So they are amino acid plus prosthetic group. Example, glycoprotein. Metalloprotein. etc. So, the other classification of protein is based on their structure. That is three types, fibrous, the globular and the membrane protein. So these are the three types of proteins based on the basis of their structure. First of all, we will talk about the membrane protein. You must be knowing a little about what exactly a cell is, as you all are from biology background, I presume. So, cell is basically made up of plasma membrane The aqueous part of the cell is cytoplasm and the inner circular part is the nucleus which contains all the genetic information. Inside the cytoplasm there are organelles present that do various functions, that perform various functions inside the cell. So the plasma membrane
is found to have a structure. What kind of structure is it? It is called the fluid mosaic model. It was pr proposed by scientists Singer and Nicholson. According to this model, the quasi-fluid nature of lipids across the plasma membrane enables the lateral movement of the proteins. So this is what the uh, model, uh, the fluid mosaic model states. It enables the lateral movement of proteins. The quasi-fluid nature. What does it mean? The quasi-fluid. The half fluid. It is not completely fluid like water and it is not completely rigid like something solid. It is quasi-fluid. Partially fluid. Like a gel. Like something like a jelly. So, the quasi-fluid nature of lipids. Okay. Lipids are made up of fatty acids. Right. So, lipids enables the lateral movement of protein, the sideways movement of proteins among the bilayer. This is a bilayer. So, it says there are proteins. What type of proteins are these? There are two types of proteins. These are the peripheral proteins and these are the integral proteins. The peripheral proteins are the ones that are found in the, on the surface, on the periphery, on the surface of the plasma membrane. And the integral proteins are the ones that are integrated, that are inside the uh, plasma membrane or the lipids. They are integrated inside the lipids. So these are the two types of proteins. The peripheral protein and the integral protein. So they help in the movement. In, and then there is a type of transmembrane protein which crosses from uh, one part to the other that is from the cytoplasm to the external environment this is the external environment or suppose this is the interior of the cell the cytoplasm so this is the inside of the cell so these proteins the transmembrane proteins they help in movement of molecules what type of molecules? They can be gases, gases diffuse into the plasma membrane or inside the cell and outside the cell. They can be ions, they can be small uncharged molecules, they can be polar molecules. So this is facilitated by the transmembrane proteins. So this is about the membrane proteins. Next we come on to the fibrous proteins. Fibrous proteins, they are helical, rod shaped. Fibrous, write it again. They are helical in shape, rod shaped. They are long, rod shaped. Red like or you can even say they have a sheath like structure this is the first point the second is they are insoluble in water or acid or base. The third is they have strong interactions. By these three points we can come to other conclusions as well. And another point there is is repetition. Okay. So fibrous proteins they are rod shaped, thin, sheath like. So, also we said they are insoluble in water. So, they are insoluble in water. They must be present somewhere in the surface where the protein is not much exposed to water or acidic or basic conditions. So, the third point is they have strong interactions. 
if there are strong interactions between two proteins, they must be forming some kind of structure. Their role must be in a structure formation. So they have strong interactions. This means they are having a role in structure. So yeah, we can come with examples. Collagen, elastin, and keratin. So collagen, elastin, and keratin. They are all found in the skin and hair. They form the structure. So these type of molecules, the pro uh, these type of proteins, they are they're helping in the formation of structure. So the next type of protein is the globular protein. Globular proteins, they are the opposite of whatever the fibrous proteins are. They were thin and long. These are compact. They are not long, they are spherical. These were insoluble in water, the fibrous ones were insoluble in water, acid and base. So they are soluble in water, acid and base. They had strong interaction. These are weak interactions. That means that the interaction between the different amino acids forming the globular protein uh, is obviously weaker. They can be easily um, denatured into the uh, primary structure from the 3D structure. 3D structure is attained by the tertiary or quaternary structure. We will talk later. So, the other is they form. They are, in fact, even we can say they are more folded. And they are not involved in structure. They are not very tough. Fibrous ones, they are strong interaction. Collagen, elastin, keratin. They are so strong. Collagen, in fact, it is the uh, most abundant biomolecule found in the animal kingdom. Collagen. So, when we talk about the fiber, uh, sorry, the globular proteins, they are not involved in structure. So, we can easily come up with examples. Hemoglobin. Insulin, enzymes, etc. Immunoglobulins, antibodies, rather. So, this is the introduction about proteins. Now we will move on to the structure of proteins. So, this video, in this video, we will only cover the primary structure of protein. The secondary and the super secondary will be in the third, uh, in the second video. And in the third video, we will talk about the tertiary and the quaternary structure. So here we will talk about the primary structure. There are different kind of amino acids present. As just denote them with different colors right now, so as to make it easier for you. They can be any amino acids among the 22 standard amino acids we know. Okay, so these are not forming proteins. These are nothing at all if they are not bonded together. There should be at least some kind of bond that makes them into a protein. So. That structure is a primary structure.
So this is very simple. Amino acid, different kind of amino acid. Even two same kind of amino acids can be joined together. This is the primary structure. A simple stretch or a simple uh, unbranched stretch of amino acids that are joined together by the help of what kind of bonds? Peptide bonds. And peptide bonds, they are a type of covalent bonds. That is, they are formed by sharing of electrons. Sharing of electrons. So when amino acids, they form bonds, what is released? Water molecule is released. These are then, are they amino acids that are forming bonds? No. They are amino acid residues. So, two amino acids forming bonds. So, these are individually now amino acid residues. Amino acid residues forming bond, they are called peptide, peptide formation. And when many peptides join together, we say it is a polypeptide. So this is a very basic and a simple video but this can clear your concepts. So I hope you liked the video. Do subscribe to Science Nerd for more updates. This series will come after each day and we will talk about proteins in, de in detail and in depth. I hope you liked the video. Do subscribe to my channel. Thank you.